Hello, I'm Nick from Quit With Nick. I'm a hypnotherapist who specialises only in cigarettes and vapes. Have done for 15 years. Now, I wanted to actually offer what I think is a very useful analogy when trying to understand how and why hypnotherapy works, or how it helps, rather. Here's a useful analogy I often use with my clients. It might help you. Now, you've probably heard the term, life is a journey, right? Most of us have. Now, that implies that there's a vehicle. There needs to be a vehicle to have a life journey. Now, that physical body that you have, in a sense, is a vehicle, you know? For the life journey, that journey starts from the cradle and ends at the grave, and there's a journey in between, right? That physical vehicle of yours is managed and looked after by a conscious and an unconscious. They work together, right? Now, at this very moment, your unconscious is running 99.9% .9 of that vehicle of yours. It's probably one of the most complex creations, pieces of evolution that we know of. It's extremely complex. That vehicle of yours is made up of about 60 to 70 trillion cells. Trillion. Every second, a million cells disappear, they die, and are replaced by a million new cells. There isn't a single cell in your body that was there seven years ago. Every seven years, every single cell has been completely regenerated, refreshed, renewed, if you want to call it that. So that's an interesting thing to think about in and of itself. There isn't a single cell in your body that's more than seven years old, yet you have memories that are much older than that, don't you? Hmm, there's something to ponder. <laughs> Why is that? Um, so... Your body is extremely complex. Your brain has billions, trillions of connections. Your endocrine system, the chemical factory that your body is, is extremely complex. The eyeball alone is extremely complex. Your heart, your neurology, the beating of your heart, your body temperature, all of this is being run by some kind of deep intelligence, right? So when it comes to hypnotherapy, what you could say is that the moment someone closes their eyes, all that is present is the conscious mind. By following along with some simple verbal instructions, your conscious mind actually brings in this other part very slowly, and you don't even know when the unconscious is there, because the unconscious does not join the conscious mind in any way that you can see smell, taste, feel, hear. So it doesn't lend itself to your typical five senses, which is why a lot of people who have seen or done hypnotherapy think they weren't hypnotized because they were waiting for something that was never going to happen. And the therapist didn't really prepare them and inform them enough to let them know that, hey, you're not actually going to feel hypnotized, but you will be as long as you follow the instructions. This blending will naturally happen because it happens through the day all the time. So once this part, the unconscious has joined the conscious, the conscious mind can now be a passenger in the vehicle, the physical body. This part's kind of sort of done its job. Now it can sit in the passenger seat so you can let your unconscious take the wheel for that period of time that you're in the hypnotic trance, right? You can trust your unconscious to look after your mind and body. You can trust your unconscious to take care of the vehicle while your conscious mind comes along for the relaxing ride. I mean, if you can trust an Uber driver some stranger to drive a vehicle for you. You've never met them. Think about how trusting we are of a complete stranger to drive a vehicle for us. We're trusting them with our life. If you can trust a random person to drive a car for you, you can trust your own unconscious mind. You trust it to keep you breathing at night when you're asleep, don't you? You trust it to beat your heart. You trust it to digest your food. 
We, we, so we should trust our unconscious mind. It's your unconscious, right? It's running your body. Now, while the conscious mind is in the passenger seat, it can do what you would do if you were a passenger. When you're a passenger in the car, you don't observe and analyze and scrutinize and you're, you're not vigilant with every single thing they're doing. You trust that they know how to drive the vehicle and you're on your phone watching the, looking outside, right? Same thing in a hypnosis session. As long as you don't fall asleep, that's the key ingredient, you don't fall asleep. Your mind can wander and think about what you're going to have for lunch and the traffic and the laundry you have to do. As long as you're awake, that part is doing what it needs to do, the driving, right? My words, a hypnotherapist's words, are much like GPS instructions. When you jump in a car and you type in a destination you haven't been to before, you type in into the GPS a certain destination. Let's say your destination is to be a non-smoker. <laughs> the GPS then has to assess where you are in relationship to your goal, and then it maps out the most efficient, direct route from where you are to where you want to go. And then it begins giving you verbal guidance. See the analogy here? My words are just like GPS instructions. Now, just like my words in hypnosis, they can't control and override a decision of yours. If the GPS says in one kilometre turn right, you could go, nah, you know what? I'm going to go left. <laughs> and you may still get to the same destination, but it's your choice. It might take a little longer, might not be the most efficient route. Someone could be sitting in a chair going, being resistant. No, no, no. That's fine. You've got the choice to go left or right or wherever you like, but you may not get to your destination, right? Hypnosis isn't mind control. It's not going to tell you what to do. You're not going to like a puppet, like a marionette puppet on a string. You've always got the choice, right? So you can follow along with the verbal instructions, the GPS instructions. Your destination is to be a non-smoker, right? This is the most efficient route to get there. The unconscious really responds well to analogy and metaphor. That's why it's um, pretty common that hypnotherapists will use metaphor and analogies because um, that speaks very much and directly to the unconscious. So anyway, I hope that's just helped you appreciate a little bit about what's happening in a hypnosis chair. If you want to know more or you want to get in touch or you're ready to take that step, quitwithnick.com.au, subscribe. There's plenty of videos here that might help anyone quit all on their own just with some insights and stuff. So take care. Nick from Quit With Nick.